Today's ranking video is Dokken, the US hard rock band. But the question is, why weren't Dokken massive band? Why weren't they as big as the likes of Motley Crue and Van Halen? They had the charismatic singer, they had the guitar hero. But what went wrong? Maybe this question we can answer in today's rock ranking. Welcome back to Rockers Beer Review. Today we're going to be doing the ranking of the albums by the rock band Dokken. US band formed in 1979. The classic Dokken lineup really is Don Dokken on lead vocals, George Lynch on guitars, Jeff Pilson um, on bass, who actually replaced the rap band One Croucher in 1983, and Wild Mick Brown on drums. This was a lineup that remained from uh, 1983 to 89 and also from 93 to 98. So as I said in the introduction, Dokken, there's a lot of people, a lot of my friends that are into rock music, heavy metal music, they're not really massive fans uh, of, of Dokken. Um, you know, a lot of them don't even know a lot of their stuff. I don't know whether they just didn't really, they weren't as big in Europe as they were in the US. But even in the US, they weren't as big as bands like Motley Crue, um, Def Leppard and... Van Halen, those sort of glam metal rock hair bands really in the in the 80s. Even bands like Rapt, were pro you could probably say, were more popular um, and more successful than Dokken were. So hopefully we'll be able to answer those questions as we go through this ranking. And the other question that I'm really sort of, uh, you know, that I really want the answer to, which someone could let me know in the comments if they think they know the answer, what is it with Don Dokken and his uh, obsession with chains? We've got breaking the chains. We're unchaining the night. Even songs like Prisoners talking about being locked in chains. He's got this thing about chains. Is he into s and I don't know. Anyway, let's get on with the ranking. So we have 11 albums to get through. Uh, these are just the studio albums. There's no live albums included. And I'll tell you why near the end of this video. In 11th place, though, is by far their worst album, and this is Shadow Life. This album came out in the sort of late 90s. It tried to be more alternative. It just wasn't the Dokken that everyone knows and loves. Um, really terrible songs. The guitar sound awful. The rumour has it that George Lynch actually made this album as bad as he could because he was he just wanted to get out of, of, of Dokken and he wanted the band to fail. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but Shadow Life has to make 11th position. In 10th position is the album Long Way Home. Now this is the one, um, obviously, as I said in the introduction, George Lynch is the mainstay of Dokken, but they also had quite a lot of different guitarists after he left. Uh, and Long Way Home in 10th position features John Norum. Um, a lot of people will know him more for being the guitarist for Europe. Um, this album, yeah, the songs, that, you know, the guitar playing is certainly good. Um, Don Dokken's voice isn't too bad, hasn't got a bit she hasn't got shaky like it's started to get um it's just that there's just songs are not the not the best on this and so i have to put long way for, long way home in 10th position in ninth position is another different guitarist and one of my favorites red beach he played guitar on erase the slate in ninth position again good songs good guitar playing but and good solos, but there's just nothing remarkable, nothing really jumps out for me. So I have to put this one in ninth position. In eighth position is another guitarist. Yes, it's um, on the album uh, Hell to Pay, which was the first with John Levin. Now he's actually appeared on three albums. Um, don't let Don't Let Me Down is a great guitar solo on this album, so, and I think he's he's playing is probably closer to George Lynch than a lot of the other players that that, that replaced him on, on subsequent albums. It's a real hard hitting song that one, and I think it's definitely the the best song on the album. But Hell to Pay only makes eighth position. In seventh position is Broken Bones. Uh, the song's Empire title track, Broken Bones itself. Classic Dokken. John Levin, again, I think he's on great form on this album. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's almost getting to the point where it's starting to return to that sort of 80s uh, Dokken sound. But I'm putting Broken Bones in seventh position. In sixth position is uh, 
dysfunctional. Now, this originally was a Don Dokken solo album, his second solo album, in fact. Uh, but they obviously, through probably the record label, they wanted to bring the original band in for it to be more successful. So they brought the original band back in. George Lynch rewrote a lot of the guitar parts on it. It's a good album, but it took like seven years since the their sort of real break, their real sort of big album back for the attack, um, and it's very disappointed. Yeah, I mean we're we're in the nineties now. Grunge had sort of been and gone almost, um, and it's you know everything's a bit more tuned down and more alternative sounding than that. In terms of the songs, I think the ballad "Nothing Left to Say" is probably the standout track. But this was really when I think a lot of people stopped listening and caring about Dokken. But it's still good enough to be in sixth position. In fifth position is "Lightning Strikes Again." This to me is the real comeback album. John Levin on guitar, it's got much more of that 80s sound on it and the songs are just much better. John Levin, as I say, he really sort of starts to sound more like George Lynch. He really shreds really well on this album. Uh, more than up to the task of being a replacement for George Lynch, who in himself is an absolute superb guitarist. But I'm putting Lightning Strikes again in fifth position. It's one of those sort of albums that you could easily have missed because it was in, in and amongst some sort of quite average albums. But for me, it's definitely a comeback album for me and one of the best. So now we're heading into the top four. And I don't think this is going to be surprising for any Dokken fan, is that the top four, you know, comprises their four first first four albums. And as I said in the sort of beginning, that I wasn't going to include any live albums. For me, uh, the album uh, Beast from the East, which is actually sort of almost like a best off of their first four albums, is their best album per se, you know, in terms of if someone said to me, I want to try Doc and what's the album I should try first? I'd always say Beast from the East, the live album. Yes, it sounds like it's got a lot of overdubs on it. The sound is immense. It really is big. And I think there's a lot of the songs on here from those first four albums that sound better on this live album um, than they do on the actual studio albums. So Beast for East, Probably would easily make number one in terms of my albums for, by Dokken, but I can't include it here because I don't think it's fair because it's, it is, as I said, it's the best. It, it, it pretty much includes the best songs from those four albums. So in terms of those four albums, which one is the best and which one in fourth position? Well, in fourth position, I'm putting Breaking the Chains. Now, this is their debut album. You know, it's got a very raw, very sort of low production sound. Breaking the Chains, the song, um, is the real standout track. But I really love songs like Felony and Night Rider. Uh, and the last track, which is actually a live track called Paris is Burning, it really showcases George Lynch's uh, guitar playing. And to be honest, George Lynch, He's up there, really, with the likes of Eddie Van Halen and Randy Rhodes in that sort of early 80s era. Um, he really is a superb guitarist um, and, and was very similar to those, those both those two players that I think got a lot more... Um, sort of a lot more prestige, whether that, you know, I mean, obviously Eddie Van Halen went on uh, and, and and even in, this, in, the, in the late 70s, he was he was a real sort of instigator of a new sort of guitar sound. Um, and obviously Randy Rhodes, unfortunately, his life was cut short by the airplane crash. Um, where would he have gone from there? You know, he, he again, but again, he's held in very high regard by a lot of guitarists. And I think George Lynch, if you're a guitarist out there, um, you should give his, a lot of his playing and listen because he's really a superb guitarist. But I'm putting Breaking the Chains, their debut album, in fourth position. In third position, I'm putting Under Lock and Key. Now, I know a lot of Dokken fans rate this as their best album by Dokken, but I, I, and he makes number three for me. I mean, there's some really great songs in there. Unchain the Night, The Hunter, Lightning Strikes Again, In My Dreams. But in my opinion, the second side is a little bit weaker. The first side is superb. The second side is a little bit weaker. So I'm putting Under Lock and Key in third position. It's still a really great album. In second position... Um, I'm putting Back for the Attack. Now, Back for the Attack was their sort of really at their height of their powers. It was their real tr last truly great album. Hard hitting, but so catchy. Um, you've got the likes of Kiss of Death, um, The Prisoner, Stand in the Shadows, Heaven Sent. And then you've got George Lynch's uh, instrumental, Mr. Scary. a real tour de force, real shows off his guitar playing. And even the last song, uh, Dream Warriors, which which was um, a song from the soundtrack um, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, is another excellent track. 
I just think it's not quite as succinct as a classic brilliant number one album um, because there's a few dud tracks on there and it's a little bit it's a bit longer than a lot of the tracks so you can say there's a few a few fillers um, and what we want for the number one the number one album by Dokken in my opinion I think has to be two for now because it's all killer and no filler we love those all killer and no filler albums so for me the title track itself is probably my favorite Dokken song and it's probably one of George Lynch's best guitar solos but you got just got lucky love that song heaven when heaven comes down into the fire these are really superb hard hitting songs um, and even the ballad alone again I think it's probably one of their best ballads so I have to put two for now in first position to me it's their their best album as a from start to finish, I don't think there's any real weak tracks on here at all. So two for now is my in my first position. I don't know what anyone else thinks. You know, are you a fan of Dokken? Is this the first time you've heard about Dokken? Are you now thinking, well, actually, you're talking about George Lynch being a bit like Eddie Van Halen. You're talking about them in the likes of Motley Crue and Def Leppard and uh, and Van Halen, obviously the band. So you know, I should go and give them a listen. Or maybe you're a massive fan. Maybe you're just waiting for them to you know, come back from the ashes. I mean, Don Dawkins had lots of health issues. He's had issues with his back and his voice. Um, and he's not the singer that he was in the 80s, unfortunately. He hasn't kept his voice uh, in that sort of decent condition. One thing I would say, though, if you're a fan of Dokken, check out Don Dokken's solo album from the sort of early 90s, Up From The Ashes. That's got John Norum from Europe on guitar playing on it. And I think it's a really good album. It's, it's almost like the better successor to Back For Attack than Dysfunctional was. Um, I wonder what that would have been like with George Lynch on it. But to me, that's a really good album as well. And I would, I'd probably put that in my top five if, if, if I was included in his solo albums. And as for George Lynch, he's done quite a lot of different collaborations. Obviously, there's Lynch Mob, some couple of great albums by them. Uh, the M Machine is something that he's just come out with this year in 2021, or the second part of it. Sounds more like Docker than Don Docker, but obviously a different singer. Um, but that's also worth checking out as well. Um, so what do you think of Dokken? Let me know what your favourite album is. Have you seen them live? Unfortunately for me, I never saw them live. Um, I was got I got into Dokken because of one of my friends had seen them support um, ACDC, I think in probably 89 on that Back for Attack tour. Um, and he got me into them and, you know, and I've been a massive fan ever since. So let me know what your thoughts are on Dokken. Why weren't they that big? I think the reason why they weren't that big was because basically George Lynch and Don Dokken didn't get on with each other and there was just too much conflict between them and when they were at their at their sort of height of their powers you know that conflict got in the way for them being being the big sort of uh, arena band that they should have been so let me know in the comments what you think hope you enjoyed this video for the Dokken album rankings and until the next one keep on rocking